Hey guys, it's Amon and Christina from, from Our Average Rich Journey. Journey. Today we are sharing the results from our Robo Advisor Challenge. We called it Battle of the Bots. And if you have been watching our channel, you know that we pit Betterment, M1, and Acorn against each other to see which Robo Advisor performed better. But in this video, we are not just going to share with you which one performed better against one another. We are also going to compare those results to the S&P 500 and the total stock market to see if a robo advisor can really outperform the market. Now, if you haven't seen our two videos on robo advisors, we'll leave a link in the description below, but we just want to give you a quick recap on those videos. In our first video, we talked all about robo advisors and our thoughts on investing with them to achieve financial independence. In that video, one of the challenges we highlighted was that there was no real data to compare the performance of robo-advisors to one another or just investing in one index fund like VTSAX. So we decided to do an experiment where we invested $1,000 into three different robo-advisors as suggested by our subscribers on YouTube and Instagram. And this brings us to video number two. In that video, we presented the three robo-advisors that we were going to invest in and we laid the groundwork. We said we were going to invest $1,000 upfront and then add $10 each week to each one of those robo-advisors. And for the past six months, we have contributed $1,260 to each one of those robo-advisors. And as we invested in each of these robo-advisors, we learned more about each of the platforms and we made some interesting discoveries. Oh, I would say some very interesting discoveries. You see, we are traditional investors. I mean, we invest with Vanguard. We have some accounts with other traditional brokerages. So for a lot of new investors, they are starting out with these robo-advisors. But for us, we were at the traditional brokerages. So now we're going into the robo-advisors. We had some very interesting observations. So let's go over our observations. First, we noticed that the user interface for these robo-advisors was very user-friendly. And especially coming over from a traditional brokerage like Vanguard. When you see Acorn, M1, and Betterment's interface, it's like a shiny new toy. I mean, it, they have all these different bells and whistles, and it just seemed very user-friendly. But, and this is a big but, there was a lot missing. I mean, when we're investing with Vanguard, there is a lot of different data that, that you're able to obtain. It's not the most user-friendly inter interface, but the information is probably the most practical. So we found the very clean and simple interface that's offered by robo-advisors disguises some very useful information. So that leads us to our second observation, is that your return on your investment is not clearly calculated on these robo-advisor platforms. So each platform does it differently. Betterment was the most confusing because it had three different returns. And Acorns was too simple because it wasn't clear how they calculated their numbers. And M1 seemed just too high. So in general, it is very unclear how these robo-advisors are calculating your return on your investment. I mean, the different methodologies were confusing because when we went back and did the calculation ourselves, we were getting a different rate of return. And we'll give you an example of how this may be confusing. We said earlier that Betterment calculates your rate of return in three different ways. The first way is the time weighted return. The second way is the money weighted return, which includes simple investing and an internal rate of return. I mean, just tell me how much my return on investment was. There are so many different ways to make the numbers seem, I think, more confusing than they need to be. In fact, even almost inflated, like you're getting a better return than what you really are getting. So in the end, we ran our own rate of return. We saw how much we invested and how much we were able to withdraw at the end of the day. That was our rate of return. Now let's move on to our third observation, and this one's pretty big to me. So I noticed with all of these robo-advisors, they are constantly trying to upsell you on their products and their services. Well, you know, one of the reasons why we liked all three of these was because they charge relatively low fees for their services. In fact, M1s is totally free, but these robo-advisors make money on upselling you other products and services. So they may be offering us a credit card, or they may be offering to loan us money that we can invest, but we have to pay Pay, of course a high interest rate on that money this is how these robo advisors make the money they get you in the door and as they see what type of customer you are they try to service you 
Now let's move on to our fourth observation, which was that there are so many different funds within each robo-advisor that you're investing with. I mean, some of them had as many as 20 different funds or ETFs jam-packed into one investment. And it's very hard to understand where your money is going, what they're investing in, what percentage you're investing your money into. It's just very confusing. And this goes back to our first issue with robo-advisors is that they make the interface so user-friendly that they neglect to provide a lot of the detail. So when they're jam-packing them with all of these ETFs, you don't really understand how these ETFs are working with each other or against each other. And this brings us to our next observation is that when you dig deeper into the content of these portfolios, they're all Vanguard ETFs. So we couldn't help but think, why are we investing with a robo-advisor? Why not just go directly and buy the ETFs from Vanguard? So those were our top discoveries when we were looking at the different robo-advisors. And I have to say, based off of our discoveries and observations, I don't really see ourselves being able to grow a significant amount of wealth with these robo-advisors. But it is beyond these observations why we can't see ourselves growing a huge portfolio with these robo-advisors. It's also about performance, which brings us to the meat of this video. <laughs> How have these robo-advisors performed relative to maybe investing with a Vanguard, a Fidelity, or Schwab? Now, just to remind you, this is our own personal study and it's only over a six month time period. It's not that long term investing that we always talk about on our channel. But regardless of that, let's go over the numbers and we're going to start with Acorns. Now, like we said, with Acorns, we invested a total of $1,260 and it grew to $1,366.42 or 8.44%. And next is Betterment. We invested the same total amount of $1,260 and that grew to $1,371.75 or 8.86%. And finally, we have M1. Again, we invested a total of $1,260 in M1. It grew to $1,374.50 or 9.08%. So those are really great rate of returns over a six month period. And as you can see, M1 Finance won the robo challenge. They were the best robo advisor in that six month period, according to our special study. But how do these robo advisors compare if you would have just taken your money to a regular brokerage account and invested it into a total stock market fund or an S&P fund? That is what we're going to look at next. Now we're going to take our results with these robo advisors and we're going to compare them to different funds with Vanguard. And we're also looking over the same six month time frame, and we're also looking at the same amount invested, which is $1,260. So the Vanguard S and P 500 ETF is V O O. And over the past six months, V O O has had a return of 11.2%. Now Vanguard's total stock market ETF is VTI and they also have a total stock market index fund, which is VTSAX. And over the past six months, they both had a return of 10.9%. Now let's go back to when we said we do not see ourselves growing a significant amount of wealth in a robo advisor and it's because of numbers like these. I mean, if you look at these differences, it may not seem that significant when you're only investing $1,260 over a six month period, but consider more money invested over a longer period of time. I mean, there's a 2% difference and that makes a huge amount of difference in terms of the wealth that your money can grow over a long period of time. Now, even though we can't see ourselves building wealth for financial independence with a robo-advisor, that doesn't mean someone else can't. You may have had a different experience with your robo-advisor and you may love the products and services that they provide for you. But for us, we have a very simplified investment approach. We enjoy investing with Vanguard. We understand where our money is going. We didn't have that same sense of feeling when we were looking at these robo-advisors. But these are just our opinions. We're not saying go out and sell your robo-advisor <laughs> portfolio right now. We're saying do your research. And that's why we created this video to give you food for thought. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and join, join the, the journey. journey.